ओम नमो लोई सर्वत्रिकावर्ती हरियंता ओम नमो लोई सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धाण ओम नमो लोई सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आयरियाण ओम नमो लोई सर्वत्रिकावर्ती उवज्जायाण ओम नमो लोई सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सावण ओंकार बिंदु संयुक्त नित्यं ध्यायते योगिन कामद मोक्षद ओंकाराय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चित्सभावाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञानतिरंधा ज्ञानाजल सदाकया चक्षुन्मील ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम तीर्थंको जगत ना जयवंतवर्तोकारनाद जिन नो जयवंतवर्तो जिन न समो शरण सौ जयवंतवर्तो ने तीर्थ चार जग मा जयवंतवर्तो नमो तीर्थनायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगे नमो ते से कुंद कुंद ने अहोपकार जिन वर नो कुंद नो वनि दिव्य नो जीन कुंद ध्वनिया प्या अहो ते गुरु का नो अहो भगवती मात नो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सिद्ध ने <coughs> वंदी कहो सुत केवल भाषित आसमय प्राभृत अरे हूँ एक सुद सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारो जरे परमाणु मात्र नरे जम नेत्र तेम ज ज्ञान नथि कारक नथि वेदक अरे जाने ज कर मोदय निरजरा बंद तेम ज मोक्ष में ओ नम सिद्धेव्यो ओ सिद्धेव्यो ओम श्री सुधात्मा ने नम जय जिनेन्द्र टूडे इज ऑगस्ट फिफ्थ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वेन्सडे एंड वी आर हियर गैदर्ड ओवर हियर फॉर अवर समयसा क्लास वी आर इन द समयसा स्टांजा थर्टी टू इन लास्ट वीक वी वेर एट दिल पार्ट ऑफ द स्टांजा एंड फ्यू क्वेश्चन केम अप so we will just answer try to answer akil uh, bhai before we go and into that can i quickly ask you a question we just go from there akil bhai hello akil bhai can you hear me yes sir so last week we are talking about monia karma deluding karma kiret bhai kiret and some questions arose and everything so we will recapitulate quickly where we were into what's happening there so so that should be so as we know monia karma deluding karma there are 28 subtypes now nothing to get scared about it remember the karma fruition this karma will be in fruition deluding karma will be in fruition and they are the one mainly that we have gunsthanak spiritual development state so we have to pretty good pretty well understand exactly what those things are oh, one second my speaker is not working aur jine ke liye sahyog do Uh, can you hear me now hello jab bhagwan bahubali ka sahit sandesh man mein utar jata hai we can hear you but uh, you can't hear us i know one second hold it seva mein santushti milti hai ah can you hear me now or not atul we can hear you Oh, okay, okay, good, good. No, but no, doctor. Somebody was asking you a question. You didn't hear it. 
Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I ask that question, please, again. I think somebody was asking question. Who was that? Was it Preeti? Preeti ji or somebody was asking question? Uh, no, uh, Kirit, I was asking a question, but if you want to continue it, I can ask later. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just it go was uh, one of the questions that uh, Rekha Ben had posed the other day uh -huh. in the basic Jainism. Uh, but what was the question? <laughs> so, uh, Kirit, uh, Tatwa no Ninae. पंचेन्द्रिय I understand your questions. And uh, this actually is also part of the Atma Siddhi stanza number five, I think. Vairagya di saparato josaha atam gnan temaj atam gnan ni prapti tana nidan. So basically, question is that uh, when, we, when we have determination about the real nature of the soul, how does that determination occur? That was a question. And because. And no, actually, uh, my question is Gnani Pariyama and a Pachi Shraddha. Just let me ask my question and then I'll talk in English. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Then you can translate. So Gnani Pariyama Thai Pantyare Mon Hajarche. Right now, yes. right now in Mithyatva Gunstana, right now on the wrong faith spiritual development state, the first spiritual development state, I have scriptural knowledge and sensory knowledge. I have access to those two knowledges. And again, as you said, that because we are five sense sentient beings, that means we have uh, uh, full use of a uh, scriptural knowledge, which up to four, four, uh, uh, four sense living being, they don't have scriptural knowledge. They have only sensory knowledge. So here we have the scriptural knowledge means I can think about past and future from my own experience or somebody else's experience. Also, I can think about past and future of a given thing. So here, what I'm doing right now, I'm reading the scripture, I'm listening to the classes, I'm, 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 I'm just contemplating, I'm trying to understand all the thing, more question comes, I ask somebody, or I read further, and my questions get answered, and now there is some clarity of course in front of me. Just think about that one has taken shower and there's a mirror, so mirror is fogged up completely. The fogging up of the mirror is same as our scriptural knowledge and uh, 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 sensory knowledge. So it's a fogged up knowledge. Now, gradually, as I continue to go deeper into the scriptural study, then the fog starts getting cleared up somewhat. And a point comes that I have pretty good understanding now. And now I start contemplating on that understanding. So now, again, still I'm in the Mithyatva Gunstana. I'm in the first Gunstana. So I contemplate upon, contemplate upon my, my thought process, including my mind thought process, including my mind, are involved only about the nature of the soul. So, for example, we are doing... Here, the, yes. Isn't mind a deep... Oh, I'm sorry. 
mind pudgal mind oh, is my, 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 yes. ajeev yes yes my, so my understanding is that yatartha tatvanirne mm -hmm. occurs in a chetan padar yes. not in uh, not in a chetan padar so the presence of mind and correct me if i'm wrong is an uh, instrumental cause okay. remember what happens even five senses the knowledge gathered by five senses they are fragmented form of knowledge right and mind also involved same way whenever the material mind is involved and at that time the soul also as a bhavman means psychic mind will be there material mind will be the matter particles and psychic mind is a more of the knowledge Re -re related to the material mind having acting as an instrumental cause so five senses and mind combined together they will give um, the the fractional form of knowledge Pretty, your machine is working yeah i wanted to ask a question yeah yeah okay uh, so, but go ahead and finish then i'll ask my question right. so the the, the, the uh, fragmented form of knowledge occurs in the knowledge mode in that knowledge mode having fragmented form with five senses and mind combined together but knowledge occurs in the knowledge mode knowing action occurs in the knowledge mode now that the determination for the reality is made now i contemplate upon means i keep on working on that one and my reflective thought keeps on working and working and working this is me this is me i'm on the soul i'm the soul i'm the eternal soul i'm the powerful soul that kind of, of, of contemplation going on and your determination becomes kind of a, a concentrated further down and a point comes the yathar tatva nirai means absolute concentrated form of determination is there and that contemplation keeps on going then slowly slowly the the, the reflective thoughts they will start slowly slowing down and now a point will come when that reflective thoughts becomes non existence and the soul goes into the primary abstract comprehensive state which is nirvikalp dasha reflective state is vikalp dasha so nirvikalp dasha means that sutra gnan that i had it that scriptural knowledge i had it which was in the reflective thought process while i'm in the first spiritual development state now that reflective thought slows down slows down slows down and now same sutagnan same scriptural knowledge gets it turned towards the soul and then it becomes super sensuous knowledge means mind is not there senses are not there only scriptural knowledge with the experiencing of the soul that's present there other way of looking akil uh, bhai one second yeah we are first of all we talking about the tatva nirnay right? <laughs> number 2 i want to know where is contemplation happening then <laughs> very uh, followed by determination which part is this happening it is you are going from vikalpa to nirvikalpa nirvikalpa i understand that's a different story but the contemplation and the determination all this is in vikalpa dasha no vikalpa everything is in the reflective so, thought process vikalpa dasha and so the tatva nirnay is in vikalpa dasha or in nirvikalpa vikalpa dasha vikalpa dasha vikalpa dasha means in what right, right now for example Wait, um kiran yeah go ahead so i just i'm trying to catch up with all of the questions i i'm trying to understand the question. okay you want to, okay the question on the table is that a determination of the reality 
absolute determination of the reality, whether it occurs in the reflective thought process or it occurs in the primary abstract comprehensive state. So, tattva nirne, yes. What is is that tattva. what you're defining in English? But what is tattva nirne? Just turn that to the very point you were explaining. What is yes. Tattva, yeah. Okay. You you are breaking down, but I, I I got your question that what is this tattva word tattva nirnay means? The word tattva nirnay means determination of the real nature of the soul. Tattva means a soul, nirnay means determination, the absolute determination of the nature of the soul. And this is occurring in an indirect knowledge form. It is occurring in the form of with the sense, sensory organs involved. Five senses and mind are involved. So it is occurring as a reflective thought and it is it just determination is made. But now, see, on the piece of paper, we made the, like for example, we look all this picture over here right now. Okay, um, deleting karma, there are 28 subtypes, and I stop there. That's the information only. Informed. Now, that information we start putting into the action within. Then, what is it? What is the need of this 28 subtypes what is, to know? What is, what is uh, so, basically, we have information gathering right now. After information gathering, we sit down and quietly and we try to just uh, uh, analyze that information, try to understand, try to assimilate and say, okay, now these 28 subtypes, why, why do I have to know it? What's the relationship? What's the relationship with the right faith? What's the relationship with the uh, further um, uh, purification of the soul and everything? And you, one starts reflecting upon, contemplating upon nature of the soul. We just keep on thinking and thinking and thinking. Now, nothing else is going on except this nature of the soul in my mind. For example, I'm looking at this light. I'm looking at the light. Am I looking at the light? Now I start analyzing. Light is an object. That object get illuminated in my knowledge mode and I as a knowledge mode end up knowing this illumination of this light in my knowledge mode and this knowledge mode is coming from the known uh, uh, all uh, I mean a knowledge attribute and knowledge attribute is getting support from the all knower soul substance so when I'm looking at the light Actually, I am publicizing my eternal soul substance. I'm manifesting my eternal soul substance. And that way, now, instead of a light being an important thing, my eternal soul substance become important. Again, this is in the reflective thought process. So I, I, I start doing this kind of exercises whenever I'm sitting down, now all this kind of thing happens. And my determination about eternal soul substance becomes thicker and thicker. It becomes more, more, much more concentrated form. Once that is happening, now I just say, I am the reason, I am the soul. And I have to have my faith come over here. Again, it's a reflective thoughts. And again, it's a wrong faith state. Once that reflective thought becomes concentrated form and gradually my reflective thought starts slowing down and at one fine time that reflective thoughts becomes non-existent and I enter into the primary abstract comprehension, which is a direct knowledge of the soul, which is super sensuous knowledge, which there is no mind and senses are involved. And that is called self-experiencing. That's called right knowledge. That's called enlightenment, self-realization, whatever names you want to give it to them. The, for example, let's say 
अंकित वेन यू आर इन दिफ्थ that fifth labdi which is karan labdi that means you are in a process of obtaining samyak darshan which is very short time it occurs and ultimately one ends up with the experiencing of the soul okay. that makes sense so then so then it's it must be prayog yoga it must be prayog yoga you, you it's not you the mean, other three what you it's mean it's definitely not the other three yeah yes you are right okay so नंबर we are in the class why do why am i in the class because i want to know something i have inquisitiveness you know week after week after week you guys are hanging around for five, this is sixth year you know that we are the, the, we have almost finished six years on samaysa class and so why am i putting my time over here because i want to learn something number one so that inquisitiveness has started that inquisitiveness started but my slate is pure plain blank there is nothing on it so what we try to do is what's the six substances what's the nature of the soul what's the nature of the matter medium motion medium of rest space and time all the six substances we understand then we come to soul what's the structure and function of the soul we try to understand that part now that we understand the structure and function of the soul all this thing up to here is a information gathering only we just got the information that's it we have not applied information to ourselves right now now the application part comes information we have gathered infinite times in the past but now application of this information comes that okay if this is a soul substance then i would like to experience this soul substance that little boy who was playing the video game he was been told, told three times by his father bring the water bring the water don't you listen bring the water every five minutes interval daddy is saying that and kid says daddy don't become angry you spoke three times first time nicely second time formally third time loudly so did that guy did that kid really hear those things he did not hear that in fact he heard but he did not act on it that means it is not heard similarly when we gather all this information about the soul and nine substance about the six substances and nine and real and uh, nine elements and everything and structure and function of the soul and everything but thereafter it, it stops there then it's not good because that information has not been processed now that we are in the in processing form of the information so now we sit down quietly in a corner and we start working through our mind that what what is this nature of the soul who am i am i the physical body am i the soul all those things we start thinking and thinking and thinking and now 
by doing that way we make determination that i am the soul and besides the soul everything else is a non soul entity and i have no relationship to the non soul entity i have i am only boss of my own entity which is a soul now we start contemplating upon this one we keep on thinking and thinking and th remember we are involved with this physical body since time infinite in the past infinite times in the past and so that belief is so strong so strong so deep rooted that one day thinking about it two days thinking about it nothing will happen it will take time it will take time and effort on on on, on our part to reflect upon to think upon to 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 solidify my thoughts about it any question coming i try to solve that way and now i walk very narrow path of this knowledge and that is a reflective thoughts again it's a, a wrong faith state but right now on this wrong faith state i am each and every step i'm taking is towards some darshan and that's why in the moksha prakasha in the chapter 7 uh, pandit todamal ji said it's called samyak sanmuk mithya drashti wrong faith soul having face towards right faith so up up until now i'm running and running and running and running in the wrong direction and then now once i gather all this information now i take turn and i said wait a second there is no sense running on the wrong side so now i stop take a u turn and just one step that will be towards samyak darshan next step will be towards samyak darshan and in that phase we start analyzing the fact we start putting in our action for example i became angry right now was i supposed to become angry number 1 What, did i become angry because of a person number a b c d no i became angry because of my own i had a choice not to become angry i did become angry i should not do that so now changes are getting slowly percolating in my mind in my system that i should be right now taking responsibility my for my own act your uncle yes uh Can I share a paragraph that I think may, may it's going to simple exactly supplement what you're saying and it's a re, it's your own reference Okay go ahead from chapter 7 of Moksha Prakasha and I think it's a, it's a he does a very beautiful job explaining what the Purana is you mind if I read yeah. that Yeah please Okay this is towards the end of chapter 7 Mhm mm Okay This is Pandit Toramalji Mm-hmm. there the ascertainment of those things is materialized by knowing udesh which is nomenclature lakshan nirdesh which is differentiations and characteristics parisha which is logical examination therefore first of all he should learn their names this is udesh mm-hmm. then he should know their differentia or characteristics and afterwards should start examining logically as to whether quote whatever is written is possible or not mm-hmm. there the learning there learning the names and knowing the characteristics these two things are based on the sermons one should memorize these as discoursed however in the process of their verification one's own rational thinking is required mm-hmm. therefore one should ponder over them judiciously in his active consciousness in solitude that quote whether the facts are as sermonized or are otherwise there he should try to understand properly through inference the various types of comprehensive knowledge or whether the sturm the sermon quote states like this and it is not to be believed to be like that then maybe it should be otherwise end quote so among these alternatives which reasoning has more weight 
and which has less weight. Whichever appears to have more weight should be taken to be true. And if the truth seems to be otherwise than what is sermonized, or if there remains some doubt or ascertainment is difficult, then he should consult the specialists and ponder over the answer received. In this manner, only one, sh one should only raise questions and ponder over answers until ascertainment is not reached. Alternatively, one should discuss with co-religionists possessing similar knowledge through the process of questions and answers, conveying his own understanding to them, get their response and ponder over it. And one should ponder over in solitude whatever conclusion is drawn in the question answer process. In this manner, one should continue making efforts till he is not able to grasp the gist in his inner self in accordance with true sermons. So basically, that's what you say, that uh, once, once you have clarification in your mind, then you start pondering upon in solitude and pondering upon and just de determine that this is me, this is me and everything else besides me is not me. And so that way, is anger me? No, I'm the eternal soul suffering. Is ego, greed, deceit, is it me? Is rag waste me? No, they are not me. Yes, they occur within me, but they are not part of me. They are the altered state. And that altered state is not my true nature. This kind of pondering when, you, when, when one is doing, automatically anger, deceit, ego, greed, intensity decreases. One does not have to look at the anger, deceit, ego, greed to remove them. When we start looking inside towards the eternal soul substance, pondering upon that one, the rest of the altered state starts becoming milder in form and a point will come ultimately that when primary abstract comprehension occurs, they will not be present, they'll be gone. So this is what, now, now, now one more thing that I would like to add here that, you know, for example, do I wake up in the morning and go to the mirror and look at myself and say, hey, remember, your name is Kirit, okay? Whole day you have to remember, don't forget. If somebody says Kirit, you have to say yes, right? Do I do that? No. Because I have conviction that I am carried. It is so sitting back of my mind when I'm talking, when I'm eating, when I'm jogging, when sleeping. Constantly that contemplation is in the back of my mind, conviction in the back of my mind that I am carried. Similarly, here, in a, in a beginning state, I have to say, I'm the soul, I'm the eternal soul, I'm a pure soul. I have to recite about it several times a day and everything. For Kirit, I don't have to just recite at all. Similarly, it, the, 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 this contemplation should become so strong, so concentrated, that now it becomes second nature. To Gurudev says, when somebody says, Atma, you, you, you should have goosebump all over your body because they are talking about you. That kind of conviction has to occur. And for that thing, it will take time because for infinite times, body is mind, body is mind, that conviction needs to be shaken up and it will take time. And so, so, so what? I, I have all the time with me for infinite times I was doing wrong thing. So now for doing right thing, I have infinite time also in front of me. Yes, this life may come to an end before I can get a right faith. But so what? Because my determination about my true nature, that kind of a knowledge will come in the next life and your, uh, 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 your, your, your uh, uh, sadhana, your effort will continue further. Till you get, till you get first some uh, right faith, and then ultimately liberation. <laughs> liberation. Right? 
Okay. Kid by, uh, so, so if somebody has Tatva Ninai, uh -huh. yeah. uh, uh, so that is not Samyak Darshan. No. So if the Ayusha finishes and yeah. the soul moves on, does yeah. the Tatva Ninai go with, it, with the soul? Yes, because remember, remember, do you have, uh, uh, number one, do I have a knowledge attribute with me? Yes. Do I have knowledge attribute? So is it part of the soul? Yes. When the soul goes, does the knowledge go with that? Yes. That knowledge can have uh, uh, matignan, uh, 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 sensory knowledge, scriptural knowledge, uh, clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy, or omniscience knowledge, five different parts. So are they also going because they are part of the knowledge? So are they going with the soul? Yes. Now, if the matignan so is there, Yes. But, but you are uh, so you are uh, concluding that I will go. I will have another Sangni Panchendriya bow. If I have all Sangni Panchendriya bow, then it's not going, right? No, re yeah. Remember, if you yes have, or no, please first answer uh, yes no, or no. No, no, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to because you have done your your determination of the nature of the reality Tattva Nirnai. Now you have done that right that that thing so many times you have done it contemplating again and again and again and again that if you are going to get getting neck life it will be five cents sentient being only and but what if my aisha was determined before yeah, but so and I, I go to four four cents being then what happens to tatwa nirai then you have to start all over again but you know what? If I can remember, there is also a rule. There's also a saying that if you are on the right path today, if you are on the right path today, then by by, by principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship, your age determining karma will be bonded in a proper way because you are on the right path right now. That is also a saying there. So who, I could be any, I could be worst of the worst person, but now I turn around and now I'm on this path of spirituality, then my age determined karma will be bonded in this phase and it will be occurring for the next five cents sentient life which it could be uh, the human life again, or heaven, hellis, or a higher form of animals. Kid by Prayagya Labdi, how many times a soul can get Prayagya Labdi? Prayagya Labdi, you get a... Prayagya Labdi, you have given... One has got infinite times Prayagya Infinite Labdi, times, and one. lost it again, right? Yeah. Okay. And lost it also because there because it did not go to the current of the means last last power that's why yes. it got lost. Okay, thank you, Kirby. Okay, so sorry everybody. No, 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 no. Don't say sorry. I mean, it's it's it's, it's good that everybody also ends up uh, getting the uh, knowledge about it. So there is nothing to feel sorry about it. No, this is the class we are just doing discussion to each other, and uh, that's good. No, uh, yeah, thank you for asking the questions. I support that. Thank you. Okay. So now, do you understand uh, about Priti or do you, have, do, do, do you have questions about it? Any, any more thank questions? You. <clears throat> I under, the thing is that I understood the um, explanations, but just at the very end you said, or somebody said that uh, Tatva Nirne is different than um, Samyak, non Samyak Darshan Samyakta, right? So, I was just, I missed some point somewhere. Tattva yeah. means you are on the, on the uh, outside the Samyak Darshan. You are... Okay, that's what it was. Oh, that was. Miracle, isn't it the only way to Samyak Darshan? Isn't it the only, it is the only path to Samyak Darshan, Tattva Nirnai, no? Yes, that's because if you don't have Tattva then you cannot go further. It has to be there. Now, you know, different, different way people can dissect and they say, well, no, no, bhakti is only the way you can get a samyak darshan, everything. But again, with all those things, ultimately, tattva nirnai has to be there. If it is not there, you are just not going nowhere.
So you can dissect in different way, but ultimately it will come to the same way. You are on the top of the mountain and you, you the, 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 from the mount, top of the mountain, the water starts falling down. It may take different routes, but ultimately aim of that water is to go down. No matter how you cut it out, ultimately Tattva Ninai has to be there. So it is, that, that's, what, that's true, you are, what you are saying. You know? So then, Kiritanko, Tattva Nirne is um, the, the contemplation before you actually get it, right? Yeah. Did I understand that correctly? Like, for example, we are on a fact-finding mission right now. We are trying to gather information, and now we are going to process that information. That's called Tattva Nirne. Processing of the information is Tattva Nirne. Processing, okay, okay. And that will be with the contemplation, meditation, and <clears throat> reflecting upon and all those things. But again, it will be in the first instana, spirit, first spiritual development state, still wrong faith is there. But that wrong faith is becoming milder and milder. But again, I'm not worried about that one because my aim is to remove that wrong faith. So I'm going to continue just having milder nature of our anger, deceit, ego, greed. I'm not going to get that to that. So that means all of us could be in the state of Tattva Nirne right now today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Kiran Kosa, isn't this, so for example, so she, uh, Preeti mentioned it, right now, so, I, okay, we established 10 minutes ago, you established that, um, Tattva Nirne begins in Prayoga Labdi. Okay, correct? Uh, yeah, okay, yes. Prayoga Labdi is where Tattva Nirne begins. Well, it's so, just, actually, you know, remember, how do you want to define that one? Even in the Kshavsham Labdi also, you are listening, right? You are listening to the lectures or you are reading something. So you are on the way towards Tattva Nirne. Okay. So that's where I was going, right. So, so the, the way it was once explained to me, I won't take credit for this, but it, I'll share it so it helps people remember. Um, if we classified by the Lovdis, which I think we covered a few weeks ago, the, um, uh, and for those of you who know Hindi, I think I'm, I think I'm saying it right here, so please correct me. Um, my memory could be faulty. But the difference between Vishuddhi Lovdi, which is the first Lovdi, and Chayoksham uh, Labdi, sorry, Chayoksham Labdi, which is the first Labdi, and Vishuddhi Labdi, which is the second Labdi, in Hindi is one is Samajne, and the, Samajne Aya, and the other one is Samajme Aya. So in other words, the, the first, the first Labdi, which is Chayoksham Labdi, is anyone with half a brain, and any person with the capacity to think and understand and you know, connect dots, so to speak, can be there. Mm -hmm. But the person with interest, which is a, a higher criteria than just the capacity to understand. In other words, it's cumulative. The capacity to understand, which is featured in Vishuddhi Labdi, in Chayabsham Labdi, in concert with the interest mm -hmm. to understand. Combined, that is, Vish, that is Vishuddhi Labdi. And theoretically, you know, knock on wood, maybe we're all in Vishuddhi Labdi. Excuse me, maybe we're all in, uh, yeah, maybe we're all in Vishuddhi Labdi. Yeah. Remember, Vishuddhi Labdi means, number one, first Kshavsham Labdi means knowledge acquiring phase, which is five sense sentient being. That means I can acquire knowledge. Could be computer knowledge, medical knowledge, or scriptural knowledge, any knowledge. I can acquire that knowledge. I have capacity to acquire. So that's a first, first part of the things. Second thing, when I have re really acquired that knowledge, that knowledge is only called fulfilling knowledge if it reduces my anger, deceit, ego, greed. So five years back, what I was, and five years down the road, what I am. Let's say one of my friends met me five years back and now he meets me and says, oh, I see lots of changes on you. 
because you have assimilated this knowledge you try to put into action also if, if i'm becoming angry every moment then that knowledge gathering has no value but as soon as knowledge gathering keeps going up my anger dc ego grid starts going down and that's a real beginning for uh, uh and, and on top of it now that I'm, I'm i'm ready for it then the discourses of the omniscient lord or the enlightened monks or true teachers they will be helpful to me to solidify whatever i have and my anger dcd grid goes further down and my knowledge starts going further up and then comes tragic i mean uh, tragic labdi means now i start putting all those things into my mind in seclusion i start understanding all the things and i start my life accordingly so this is the way it starts going in any is this question or can we go further please go ahead kirid bhai thank you okay so we were on this deluding karma last time and i was not able to get the slide and i was fumbling and everything and i don't know whether i made any sense so we will just quickly go through it and just say where we are okay um let me see yeah this okay all right uh, the current slide so this the deluding karma as we said 28 subtypes and nothing to get scared about it because what we are saying that when we have the this guy this mainly divided into two part right faith deluding karma right conduct deluding karma so initial part when i have the tatva nirnay done and when i am really really now going in a primary abstract comprehensive state at that time from the karma perspective this guy gets removed this guy gets removed so now my right faith occur right faith deluding karma are gone so now my right faith occurs incidentally when the right faith during karma this this first yellow box is going away this infinite bonded producing karma also go away so these two guys at the very first they are going away and that is called samyak darshan okay um um kirtanko did did anyone experience a pause in the audio for a few seconds there or is just me you know um, okay i'm going to rejoin okay thank you it's been happening a few times for me okay uh everybody else is okay i'm okay now okay okay right. so so first time when the samyak darshan right faith occurs that means this guy mainly is gone and associated one part of the right conduct deluding karma is a infinite bondage producing karma they are gone so these are four guys asterix is anger ego deceit greed so they are four plus 1 2 3 so seven guys are gone and that is called samyak darshan now that's now related to the baba stanza that we are on 31st stanza said that when some when somebody ends up getting samyak darshan that means now he has hybridization fault removed between object of knowledge and the knowing 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 mode and object of knowledge they both were considered to be one when i'm looking at this remote control i said this is mine and so and this is my book so right even if i say my book if i you know if, if i even if i don't say my book there is a, a hidden thing mindness is always there my my uh, my my oneness with the alien objects of the universe when 
I am Samyak Darshan, of course, that oneness gets removed. That means now the soul says, I am the soul substance, eternal soul substance, and everything else besides me are called non-soul entity, and I am separate from those entity. And that was the 31st stanza. So object of knowledge and knowledge, the hybridization for oneness of between those two, that's been removed when one gets Samyak Darshan means right faith delivering karma and infinite bondage producing karma, they are gone. So that from the karma perspective and on the soul's perspective, experiencing of the soul occurs primary abstract comprehension occurs, super sensuous knowledge occurs, super sensuous bliss occurs in this situation at that experiencing phase, senses and mind have no, no role to play. So that's the first, first kind of laudation we talked about. Now you still have some impurity in all these guys are in the form of impurities present and now it says in the second, in, in this 32 stanza, it says, how do I remove all these guys? Remember, they look huge number. Only few things are gone here, the huge number. But in fact, these are the guys, they have the strongest influence. Once they are gone, these guys are like those of, of, of foot soldiers that they have no boss around. So they are kind of, they don't know what the hell is happening. What do I do? What do I do? They are clueless. So they are easy to be thrown out. So now soul starts working in what it does. All this karma can be coming in fruition. So in the 32 stanza, it says souls end up suppressing those karma this whole thing it tries to suppress that one and then that tries to suppress that one that means further purity occurs in the soul substance and in the 33 stanza when we come that means all these guys everybody together will be eliminated eliminated completely this suppression is like that uh, of a dirty water and you put the alum and the dirt sits down and on the top there's a pure water which can which is drinkable water and so that's a separation this was separation but elimination means that the garbage from the glass is totally removed and the water is pure that will be a 33 stanza so 31 stanza removal of uh, getting some darshan 32 stanza, the separation of all rest of the guys, and 33 stanza is elimination. Now, it doesn't have to go in this pattern. From here, one can go to total elimination also, but in the stanza, Acharya Bhagwan gives gradation that this may happen one at a time. It doesn't have to be happening that way. So that's why this is the relationship of karma to the stanza we are talking. Any questions so far on this slide before we go to the uh, 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 stanza 32, back to 32? Okay, all right. So then I will take these guys out and bring the other slide on. Yeah. Give me one second, please. Okay, uh, share screen, share screen. Okay, so here we are. Um, so what it says, Bhavak, now we are talking 30 second stanza, means that on the karma, that second side of the second thing that we talk that we are going to suppress that one, it's a Bhavak. Bhav means fruition of deluding karma. 
it denoted as doer of an act. So first thing we are defining this word bhava. Then second, we are, we are defining the word called bhavya. Bhavya means eligibility of a given mode of the soul. And bhava, bhavya, sankar, those means hybridization form of bhava and bhavya. Means do the fruition of the karma and the, non, uh, the, the soul's mode of a, Ababa, increase of attachment and aversion, etc. They both are considered as one, and that's a fault. And so you remove that fault by suppressing the whole thing, by suppressing those karma. So remove of such fault by suppression, etc., of such altered state mode in the soul. And this is the second form of Tirthankar's laudation. Means the second form of a laudation from absolute point of view. Now, in the first form of laudation, there was knowledge and object of knowledge hybridization for means this is my this is my but this is the remote control, but I have minus on it, so that was removed. Second form of laudation is much more purer, purer than the first one. In the second form, there was removal of the bhavya bhavak hybridization fault. Means fruition of the karma, and at the same time, I'm getting increase of attachment and aversion. So those things were going hand in hand together. And I was thinking that I'm getting increase of attachment because of fruition of karma. So that thing gets removed. That because the, those those karma gets suppressed, and that's why the second form of laudation. And in the third form of laudation, as we said, it's a total elimination of the karma completely. So now I, I, there is a new chapter opens up, and it's you know it is just amazing how uh, uh, Guru Sri opens a chapter and uh, let us know do 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 we want to go further or not? What it says over here non-existence attribute of how gone a soul has some infinite attribute and one of the attribute called non-existence how it becomes so oxymoron attribute and non-existence non-existence attribute mean, means what let's see what it says over here it's a word with one's own strength apne bal say now what it says that we suppress those karma or we eliminated karma we removed that hybridization fault how did i do it with me as a soul with my own force with my own action with my own personal effort it happened not that somebody else came and helped me out it was me myself that i did that one so it means that soul's personal efforts occur due to self only. Now, any effort that we have it, whether it's anger, deceit, ego, greed, knowledge, likes, dislike, everything, any, or getting the right faith and everything, all these efforts are occurring because of me, by myself, and I'm the reason, and nobody else has helped me, outside substance, outside material object, outside any other substance cannot help me. The suppression, etc. of the karma occurs independently. Now, because remember that second form of laudation occurred. So we said that on the previous slide, we had said that karma gets suppressed. Did I really suppress those karma? No. Karma action occurred because of a karma alone. And on my side, I did my personal effort to get engrossed within me. When I'm getting engrossed within me, then automatically karma on the other side either gets suppressed or get eliminated. That's a karma's problem. As we said before many times, when I put the lights on, what happens to darkness? Darkness goes away by itself. Light has not done anything to the darkness. Darkness disappeared by itself. So, so here, soul performs its own personal effort. 
So soul did not do anything to karma. Karma just got suppressed or eliminated or whatever, whatever happened. That's a karma's job. This book, is it no, no new or old? When you look at it, you may say it's an old book. How did this book come be book became old? Because of its own thing. Changes occur in the matter object continuously. So I did not do anything for this book to become old. Similarly, every object, my house, do I have an old house or new house? Because each time we talked about it, the changes occurred in the house by itself. My old car, a new car. How did the car become old? By itself. So soul perform its own effort and the karma doing their own job, they both are happen independently. Now, soul has attribute called non-existence attribute means above goon within. Soul has one attribute called non-existence attribute. What does that non-existence attribute do? Due to this attribute, soul by itself has modification of purity. Purity occurs within me. When the secondary cause of karma fruition is absent. So karma being absent is karma's problem. And I am getting engrossed within me is because of me. Remember when we say definition of some word, <clears throat> stoppage. What's the definition of some word? Nine out of ten Jains will say stoppage of karma is some word. Stoppage of karma is some word. Actually, so this is one of the first things you taught us, Kiranakal. Uh, you, you, you did this, this is, this is maybe seven years ago. This yeah. is the beginning of purity. Yes. So You're, you reclassified so much of the confusion or some, so much of the inconsistencies that people bring up, myself included, is, you know, we make the mistake of focusing so much on karma, this nash, that uday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we forget about the actual purity or impurity that underlies and faces and is a reflection of that karma. So we have attention to the darkness. We are not looking at the light. But remember, light is more important. Remember, soul is more important. When we say stoppage means purity beginning in the soul substance. When the purity begins in soul substance, on the other side, karma stops coming. That's a karma's problem. And that's what has to be clear in our mind. So all this thing happened is non-existence attribute within me. I have non-existence attribute within me. Now, what is this non-existence attribute? Where is it coming from? What is, where is the reference for this one? So, Gurudev has not talked in his lecture about it, but I said it is very important for us to understand this non-existent attribute coming from where and what it is and everything. So we will next next half an hour we have it, we'll start analyzing this point. Non-existence means what? For example, soul has an existence attribute means that's why soul has a knowledge attribute because it says existence attribute says knowledge attribute is existing. Soul has a non-existence attribute of touch, taste, smell, color, etc. So soul does not have touch, taste, smell, etc. at all. Touch, taste, smell, etc. are the attribute of the matter substance. But soul, because a non-existence attribute of a touch, taste, smell, color, etc. all those were related attributes of the matter not within me within me because of non-existence attribute so where is the word coming from where is the scriptural reference to that one when is where is that thing coming from so we are just going to take a shakti 
power of hell. Is it isn't the fundamental basis the anekantvad uh, parasper? You know, two op two opposing natures are the are the reality of any 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 substance. Yes, is that yes. isn't that like the intellectual basis for? Or sorry, you, are you know what I'm trying to say. You are absolutely right because existence attribute is present in the soul and non-existence attribute is present in the soul. And somebody who does not know this principle, he will say, you guys are nuts. Just say existence or non How can you say existence or non-existence? Because you have to understand the perspective, what perspective we are talking. We are talking from this knowledge perspective. Knowledge is present. Knowledge is existence attribute. That's why knowledge is present. Non-existence means that the touch, taste, smell, color are not present. Existence, non-existence, exact opposite two things are present in a given substance at a time. They are operating together. It's not that uh, some part of the soul has an existence, other part of the soul is non-existence, it's not like that. So this is the Abhav Shakti. When I say Shakti, now suddenly, now a, 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 a light bulb goes in the mind and say, oh, oh, we are talking about 47 powers now. Yes, Abhav Shakti is mentioned in 47 powers of the soul. Where is 47 powers? At the end of Samaisa. After 415 stanzas that Kunkun Acharya Dev wrote down, and Kunkun Acharya Dev kept on saying, kept on hitting so hard, so hard, saying that knowledge is soul and soul is knowledge, knowledge is soul and soul is knowledge. They are, you, the, both the words are used synonymously. So much so that a, 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 somebody will start thinking that soul has nothing but the knowledge only. So Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev, Kunkun Acharya Dev was 2000 years back, Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev was 1000 years back, and he, he wrote down the commentary on Samai Sar up to 415 stanzas, and then he had that one thought came in his mind that, hey, you know what? If we keep on saying soul and knowledge, soul and knowledge, that's all we talk in Samai Sar, people will think that there is nothing besides knowledge. So he wrote down appendix in that critic's note, and that is called 47 powers present in the soul. So infinite powers are there in the soul, out of which he was able to get 47 power from his own thinking, his own reflection, thought process, everything. He, he, he brought out 47 powers. And Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami, from his thin thought process, brought another 56 powers also. But mainly these 47 powers are very important. If we, you know, I mean, uh, maybe if you are uh, keen, you should just remember that 47 powers by heart and it will be a good one because it will just say, this is me, this is me. Jivatva Sakti, Chiti Sakti, Drasi Sakti, Gnan Sakti, Suk Sakti, Virya Sakti, Prabhutva Sakti, Vibhutva Sakti, Sarvagnatva Sakti, Sarvadarsitva Sakti, Prakash Sakti, Swachata Sakti, Akaran Karyatva Sakti, Pranam Sakti, all kind of 47 it keeps on going that way. So you have to remember by heart and if you want to have the uh, um, um, uh, write up for that, I can send it out to you. Anyway, so Abhav Shakti comes there. So what it means? Samesar Parisist. Appendix of Samisar has 47 Shakti mentioned, out of which 33rd and 34th Shakti. Shakti means power, means attribute. Because when, 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 says, when we say soul as an infinite power, out of which we say that uh, in beginning we said, if you know two or three, your business can go on and go on. So if you know knowledge, faith, conduct, and bliss. If you know these four attributes, your things will keep on going. Now you have wet your feet and now you are going deeper and deeper. So now Amrit Chandra Acharya says, remember the 47 powers are that you should know it. And once we understand that 47, then it will say they're infinite, but now don't worry about it. If you just worry about this, if you understand, learn about 47, then you can go on the, you are on the right path. So. 33rd and 34th, there is existence of a present state, 
and non-existence in the next summary. Means there are existence and non-existence. 33rd is existence and 34 is non-existence. What does it mean? 33rd power says existence power, 34th says non-existence. What happens in the soul? It says, that means the name is bhav abhav shakti. 33rd is a bhav, 34 is abhav. Means 33rd is existence, 34 is non-existence. Now, bhav shakti means what? To have a present mode to come at its own place. I am angry right now. Means my present mode did that is existing right now in the form of anger. I have deceit, ego, greed, likes, dislike, ignorance, whatever the present mode is that it's existing right now. That's a bhav shakti. I have a samyadarshan mode right now. Bhav shakti means I have the samyadarshan mode is existing right now with me. I have a Keval Gnan right now, then that, a, that the Keval Gnan mode is existing right now. So present mode having existence, past modes and future modes are non-existing right now. Means they are, they, are, they, they are already, they occurred or they are going to occur, but right now they are not existing at this point. Remember that example we took about the, uh, uh, the fountain, that a colorful fountain occurs with the light and everything. Exactly at that point, water is spurting and light is coming. So red, blue, green, yellow, orange, whatever color the light we have, color the water, we saw it existing, existence, at that particular mode occurring at the time. And Abhav Shakti means absence of the same mode in the next summary that water fell down in the pond means that mode is gone now my anger mode right now i'm angry and somebody comes and say oh come on you are a, you you are a typical scholar and everything you speak bad, good everything is this good for you and then i start thinking yeah yeah I'm, it's my fault i was big so now i'm not angry so my anger mode is gone so my anger mode is absent right now. It was present at point number five, and at point number six, summary number five, it was present, and in summary number six, it is absent. So can you try? Yeah. Ab banne virod virodak shakti banne ekat samay manati ho tu? Ha ekat samay. To tamhe next samay kya milak? Yeah, yeah. Because remember. We are trying to understand non-existence attribute means it is non-existing at this point also we can say. For example, let's say when I'm angry right now, that means I'm angry right now and next moment I'm having the ego, third moment I have the greed. So anger, ego, greed, three things are occurring. So when I'm angry, and when, when I'm angry, then greed and ego are not present. You can take that way also. That in a mode, anger is present means ego and greed are not present. When the ego is coming, anger and greed are not present. When greed is present, anger and ego are not present. So, Uncle, can you also say it this way? When anger is present, purity is purity absent. no abhav. Absent. Yes, you can say that too. So remember, you know, we are. No, it's not above, it's partially gone. It's not total above. No, I mean, but at least purity is not there right now, right? When, when but you are saying that both of them exist at the same, in the same summary, but for explanation, you are using one summary and then the other summary, correct? We, we are trying to explain. But remember, you are right, you are right. That is it true though, the skill right? That you are one of the same summary. So you, you have a, a angry mode is there, anger mode is there, means ego mode is not there. So a, a, a absence of ego mode, a anger mode is present, but ego mode is absent. Anger mode is present, purity mode is absent. 
Now, remember, once we understand that the principle of a multiplicity point of view, now here we are trying to understand existence, non-existence in a modal form in the sense one mode is present, then second mode that, pre, let's say 10 modes right now. Fifth mode is existing right now. Fifth semi, fifth mode is existing right now. That fifth mode at the sixth semi, that fifth mode is disintegrated. So that means the bow was over here, bow, but remember, they both are occurring in the same substance. And if you want to say same semi also, then same semi will be that uh, um, uh, this is for explanation purpose that we have said two summaries we are taking that the uh, present mode is present and this next mode it will be absent in next semi and so that's a above we are trying to understand bow and above we are trying to understand bow and above. yeah what is the difference between bow and above and sat and asat same thing. Sat means to, to be present and asat means not to be present. What I mean by sat is the astitva gun. So astitva gun is present, right? Asat means somebody else's astitva is not present within me. Asat means asat is present within me from comparison point of view of a matter substance. Okay. So it's, a, it's identical then? Yeah, yeah. So bow above what it says over here, let's put that uh, uh, multiplicity point of view on the side, try to understand this point. And then in our own mind, we can analyze that one. This will be our homework when we sit down and say, how can I make bow above in one mode only? That we have to think about it. So first well, thing- Giritanko, it's kind of obvious. Let's take number five, mode number five, right? Yeah. Anger no bow che. And mode four and mode six no bow che MKY. You can say that. Yep. You can say that also. Over here, the Acharya Bhagwan is, is made little separation for better understanding. But you are right. When present mode is present, then other modes are absent, period. At the same time, when I am man, means I am not woman. Both are two occurring together. Both are at the same time. My manhood and not to be womanhood, to be they both are simultaneously present. But over here, to have just understanding that it says bow means one mode, bow means a present mode is at that particular time. And next moment, the same mode becomes absent. Remember, we are not talking multiplicity point of view. We are talking about bow, above, and all those things. So we can cut it any way we like it. No? Okay, so don't worry about that part, okay? Okay. Any questions so far before I go next? Because it's going to become a little bit more complicated, hopefully. <laughs> I, I hope not. I hope not, but uh, it will be there. Bow above means to have the present mode and the same present mode is absent in the next summit. The bow above. Now, 35 36, emergence of the new state and disappearance of the previous state. That's a, a bow above. Emergence of new state is a bow. Disappearance of the previous state is a bow. Bow above. And but second how is that one, different from Utpad and, and, and VI? Yeah, the, when Utpad is there, VI is not there, yes. But over here, the, 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 the word bow bow will be coming. So disappearance of the present state and emergence of the new state means the name given is bow bow. That's a 35th, number 35th. Abhav bow, 36, it's exactly opposite. Bow bow means what? Bow above means existence of the present mode and will be absent in the next summary. So the present mode it takes and says this present mode is present right now, will be absent next time. 
that's bhav or bhav shakti. Bhav means that it is present, and next moment it will be a, over here. They both were separated out, and now they are combined together. That hey, remember, this is the same mode was present. It will be absent of the other one. So combined together, we are saying this was this was bow and abow, bow and abow. Now this is bow abow combined together. You know the significance will come at the end. Right now you may say this is a play of words. We have it. What difference does it make? It will make lots of difference. First, let's just try to assimilate what it tries to uh, what Acharya Bhagavan is trying to tell us. And then we'll just go in detail and to see what it tries to come out at the end. Now, disappearance of the present state and emergence of the new state means a abhav bhav shakti. Means abhav bhav shakti means it's, pre, it's not present, but in the next summer it will be definitely be present. So abhav bhav shakti will be. Number five mode is a wrong faith mode. Number six mode is a right faith mode. So, Abhav Bhav it says, Samyak Darshan is not present in number five, but it is occurring in number six mode. Samyak Darshan mode is the given predominance, and in the Mithya Darshan, there is an absence of Samyak Darshan right now. And next time when Samyak Darshan occurs, then Mithya Darshan is absent. So Abhav Bhav, Samyak Darshan was not present in the present time, but will be pre definitely be present next moment. Third set, 37, 38 Shakti, existence of present mode for sure, and absence of the mode which is not to be present will be absent for sure. Now it says this, this present mode was there, but has to be that one only and does not have to be this guy only. That's what it tries to say. So bhav bhav shakti, abhav abhav shakti means, bhav bhav shakti means whatever mode is to get generated in the present time by rule does get generated. So over here it says it occurs. But over here, emphatically, it says it has to be there only. That means if we just talk about the modes coming in their sequential order, Kram Bhat Pariyai. Today, whatever mode is supposed to happen has to be happening that way only. Nobody ever can change that condition. Not even the Tirthankar Bhagwan, not even Siddha Bhagwan, not even enlightened monks, nobody can change. Whatever more is supposed to come, it will occur. So now I become fatalistic view and say, okay, so I have a wrong faith mode. I can't do anything because more is coming in the sequential order. So what can I do? I don't have to do anything. Maybe in the next life or life after, maybe I'm going to get some meddarshan. So that mode will come. I don't have to do any. No, don't have this fatalistic view. <clears throat> it just says over here that you don't have control on your own mode. I can't do anything to somebody else. But I can't do anything even to my own more. So then if I understand it correctly, what can I do now? Well, I can't change my more. So only the shelter I have is my eternal soul substance. So when I take shelter into my eternal soul substance, when I take shelter within me, within me, within me, then purity of the mode is generated. That means some version mode is generated. So that means to understand my real nature. When we started for the class today, <coughs> what's a tattva nirnay? How can I do tattva nirnay? 
how can I make determination of the reality? How can I have absolute determination of the reality? And all those things, my efforts, my effort, my effort, my efforts are going this way, this way, this way. And one fine morning, I go into the primary abstract comprehension. And that is the one, it says, that sub mode was supposed to come, and that did come. Nobody can ever change that mode coming. But prior to that, one has done lots of personal effort. Remember, I want to become to become a medical person. It was predetermined, predestined. But then it started from the first grade. I started working second grade, third grade, fourth grade, high school, first year of college, second year of college. Now you are just you're 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 flowing towards your ultimate aim and everything. And then you get med school admission. Then you become doctor and everything. All those things, personal efforts were there. If on the first day, on my first day, I said, you know what, I'm going to become a doctor, so I don't have to go to school today. Nothing would have happened. But culmination, culmination of all the effort that I did for now, last 20 years or 25 years, or God knows what, then ultimately it ended up with that certificate. Then when they gave it to me on the convocation, that now you are pronounced as a doctor. That occurred in one summary. But for that, one has to work throughout the life. So that's why it is, you cannot have fatality cue by saying that my support, my more was supposed to come and that's why it came and nothing to worry about. Only this more, this, this bullet says that let's say you tried very hard and something didn't, didn't occur the way you expected don't get disappointed no efforts get wasted no effort get wasted okay you didn't make it to medical school so you went to the computer school whatever and now you became the ceo of the major multinational company so so why should i get discouraged that oh my god why did i not get admission so Think that way. So you just have to say, my thing in my hand to do the personal effort in my hand. To obtain that results, that's 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 not beyond my control. It will occur if you have sincerely made the let's talk talk of the spiritual. If you are making sincere personal effort right now for last six years, that way we are doing right now. It has to culminate into Samyak Darshan. If not this life, maybe next or life after work, but it will occur. I have confidence it's going to occur to me. If it doesn't occur to me, nobody will get it. Have that confidence. Have that confidence. And keep working. It will occur. Today is a 107th birth anniversary of Ben Sri Ben. Champa Ben, Ben Si Ben Champa Ben. She, she has broken so many sentences and there is a book called uh, Ben Sri Na Vachanam Ruth and on 22nd Vachanam Ruth, what she says, Chaitanya Mati Nikrai Bhavna Phale Phale Ane Phalej Chaitanya Mati Nikrai Chaitanya Ni Bhavna E Phale Phale Ane Phalej means from the conscious element when that conscious nature inclination has been generated, it will end up in a realization of the soul. Definitely, you don't worry about it. So that's what it tries to say over here, this bullet. It doesn't say that you just become non fatalistic you are not to do anything. That's that's so beautiful. So in my other Swadhyay group, I just want to comment there's a, a distinction between this Chaitanya Nibhavna and what we call Icha. Icha is, is Parvastu and Chaitanya Nibhavna is, so if I say, you know, I want to pass a test, that's Icha. There's no guarantee that's going to happen. Yeah. In her bowl, what she's saying is Chaitanya Nibhavna is guaranteed to happen. Bhavna and Icha is very important words. Icha is desire, Bhavna is inclination. Now, 
Uh, uh, well, the bhavana is not, there is not a good word. I mean, yeah, there isn't. Desire. That desire is a icha also. Bhavana will be kind of an internal thing in the sense. Bhavana is a desire for the self. I thought it was a force of will, is a bhavana. It's a force of will. You can say that because what it is, it, it, it's just some of the purity is within me. My soul substance is pure. Only thing I have to just wake up that phenomenon. Gurudev Sri said, Tu Bhagwan Che, Bhagwan Tha. Ju Bhagwan Che, Bhagwan Thaija means you are the eternal pure soul substance, but that part is hidden. You just have to explore that one. It is within you. And that is called Bhavna. But things which is not with me, and I desire something, I want to have this phone, I want to have this new glasses, I want to have a new shirt, means those are the things that I, I don't have it and I lounge for it. But bhavana means it is within me. I just have to manifest that state. So that's what bhavana and uh, icha, okay? Abhav, abhav shakti, the mode which is not supposed to be generated now by rule does not get generated at present time. No matter what happens, you will not be able to bring that mode right now. That's what it says. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, 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 shaktis are there from 33 to 38. And we are going to go further detail about it. And it, they, are, they are amazing, beautiful, beautiful chapter. And it's a so nice that uh, how Acharya Bhagwan and Tirthankar Bhagwan has given us the nitty gritty things that there is no room for making any mistake on our part. If we understand this part, there is no, now then implication. If I understand, why will I not go further? I will do it. I'm not just doing for the sake of for listening all these things. I'm here to get the ultimate. That's a Samyadarshan right now. And that's why I'm doing all the things. And all this, that's slides and everything. These are the things, these Shaktis, they are going to help us a lot. An hour and a half passed by just like that. Uh, I'm already a couple of minutes up. Any questions over here? We will have a lot more discussion occurring on this one. So if, you, if you're not getting completely all these things, don't worry about it. We will have a lot more discussion occurring. Hopefully next whole, whole next class will be on this one only. So don't worry about that part. Here, Nicole, just for my clarification, um, if, you, the, if you look at the fourth row of boxes at the bottom, the mm -hmm. first box is the, 34, the 33rd Shakti, the second box is the 34th Shakti, yeah. the third box is the 35th Shakti, the fourth box is the 36th Shakti, and then the next box is 37, the next box is 38? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I should have put those numbers so that way it will just, because, because see, this is for 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, you know, I'll put the numbers, okay? Any other questions? Any suggestions? Whatever. Okay. All right. If not, then we'll just be closing now. Okay. This is a homework we have to do. Huh? I said this is a homework we have to do. Yeah. Just contemplate upon and just say, you know, bhav shakti means what? Abhav means what? Bhav, 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 bhav is what? Abhav, bhav is what? Bhav, bhav, abhav, abhav. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks complicated thing, tongue twister, but as we start learning, it will become, it will become a lot more sense and everything. Ultimately, it will say, Buck stops at me. I am responsible for my deeds. All the six shaktis will tell me I am responsible. Nobody else can change me. I am changing because of me only. That's the bottom line. It's coming there. Yurinka, I saw a kid. He couldn't have been more than five years old. I doubt he can tie his own shoelaces. And he knew those 47 shaktis by heart. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So they, they put to uh, they put us to the shame. Yes, you are right. And I have says, uh, heard that also before you know, in Songar. 
And uh, thank God I was knowing those things, but then it will put us to shame that five-year-old kid can say, and we can't say that, you know, so it will be our own homework. And actually, you know, we have talked before also, Gurudev has done, he used to recite 174, 175 things every day in the morning and evening. And uh, it, 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 if you recite that one, if you quietly, it takes no more than seven to eight minutes, no more than 10 minutes maybe, but it will be so peaceful way to start the day and end the day. So if you are interested, I will send it out to you. It's in Gujarati or Hindi maybe, but uh, you can remember that one. You can put extra effort for that and you remember that one. If five-year-old kid can recite, we can recite that one. It's not a big deal. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll send it out to all of you. Okay, Alec? You're yeah. talking about Kanji Swami's Nityakram? Nityakram, yes. I have it. I, I, want to, I want to commit to memory. Right now is just a bhavana. Well, the, the bhavana has to become our, our reality now. Make it reality. It will happen. The swabhavma, uh, swabhavni, swabhavma anu abhav che, tivrat anu. Gnani tivrat anu abhav che, swabhavni andar. If you start watching that new old movie, Sri Char Sovis, right now, and you will remember all the sequence, what's coming next, what's coming next, what song is coming, you you know that the song by heart. How do you remember that? No, that's true. That's so, true. Uh, but, you know, Peter Tanko, this brings up a question I had. When we say, Atyarna Kashai no bhao che, if I say in this same samay, panchma samay, kashai no uh, anger, I'm sorry, anger no bhau che, uh, bhau che, then, and if I say suddhata no abhau che, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in that samay, suddhata yeah. mod no abhau che, does that, <laughs> is that, there some hesitation there? Because are you no. saying that the swabhau, uh, suddhata no, suddhata no atrikari swabhau no abhau che? It's, that's more, a different statement. Suddhatani more know about Remember, action, action you have to take it. I mean, eternal soul substance is there. But now, is it manifested right now? In the mode, is it manifested? No. So it's about. In the mode, we are talking modal level right now. Not talk about later on, we will be talking substance level also. But right now, this is the, 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 the slide we had it was from modal perspective. And so in the mode, the purity has not been manifested yet. Even though I have complete purity within me, but it's not manifested. So we can say Shakti has to do with modes? Shakti, remember, Shakti, what it says, that in a, in a Gurudev Sri specified in the Pravachans, that Shakti Uchri Raiche, Shakti Uchri Raja means power is getting manifested. That means Shakti means that pure, this six, six powers we talk, their, their modes we are talking. That's what he says, you know, like knowledge mode, faith mode, bliss mode, and all, blah, blah, the, the, all those things, you know. So they are, they are modes. And the, the, so, okay, all modes all these. The, yeah. All these shaktis are present all the time. Yeah, but they're, they're eternally present. But are they manifesting within? Manifestation no problem. Yeah, problem. but but they are all always present. So you cannot say they are not there. All forty-seven are there every yeah. summer. Yes, yes. But but because we are talking shaktiyo uchhe, and this is same question that the Chirag Pujari, same question was asked to Gurudev Sri, and he said. Shakti Uchri Raiche, the uh, Amrit Chandracharya wrote on specific word, Uchri means uh, manifesting, manifestation occur, means modal state he is talking. So pure, pure 47 Shaktis and their pure modes, not impure, pure modes. That's what it is. When we come to the Shakti chapter, then it will be an amazing, beautiful thing. But again, it, you know, time to time, we are just uh, 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 ascertaining some of those shaktis 
and like this gives a chance to us to go through the six shaktis and everything. So, 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 so this is so fun to talk about. So, oh, does the eternal soul soul substance need a shakti to continue? To are there any, is there a soul is there a shakti related to the eternal soul substance only? Not not the modal perspective, but no. I mean, shaktis That's, are attributes. Attributes. Mm -hmm. Soul has an infinite attributes, right? So shaktis are part of the soul. Am I okay, I'm, I'm just going to be patient and for our future classes. Okay. All right. Okay, anything else? Anybody else has suggestions? Thank you. Javani ke gyan se suze lokalo Chowani mastakana mo sadade to hudu Nine times more common Jai Jinendra. Thank you. Jai Jinendra. Kid, do you know, do you remember Sunanda Ben Vora? Ah, yeah, she had come to our place. She expired today, you know. And, uh, yeah, she passed away today. Yeah, she had come to our place a couple of times, you know, two, three times. And we had gone yes. to listen to her in uh, Los Angeles also. She was extremely pious soul. Very nice. Very, very, very soul. Very. 